Hi and welcome to our channel IPM Leap. We are here to help you crack your entrance exams and the topic of today's video is a repeatedly asked one in the latest question papers of IPMAT, DUJAT, PBA and BBS. Similar questions have been asked multiple times in recent years and I am sure once you understand the concept behind these questions, solving them is no big deal for anybody and I mean that. So let us suppose on a plane there are 25 points of which a set of 8 points lie on a straight line meaning they are collinear. Another set of 7 points lie on a different straight line and yet another set of 10 points lie on a third straight line. The question is how many straight lines can be drawn by joining these points and likewise how many triangles can be drawn by joining these points as vertices. So here is a pictorial depiction of the given data. Out of 25 points, these 7 points in set 1 are collinear. These 8 points in set 3 are collinear. And these 10 points in set 2 are also collinear. Now think, how many points do you need to draw a straight line? that joins them. Just two points are enough, isn't it? We can form a straight line by joining any two points. For example, if we join these two points, we get this line. And if we join these two points, we get another line. Similarly, because a triangle has three vertices, we can join any three points to form a triangle, provided those three points are not collinear. So let us solve the same question in a simpler version by dropping the condition of collinearity because solving our original question is a logical extension of this simpler case. Suppose there are a total of 25 points but no three of them are collinear. How many straight lines can we draw? Well, if no three points are collinear, then for every selection of two points, we get a unique straight line that joins them. For example, if we pick this point and this point, we get this line. For a different selection of two points, we will obviously have a different line. Therefore, number of straight lines is simply equal to the number of ways in which we can pick two points out of 25 which is equal to 25C2. So just remember, each selection of two points gives us one line. Now, here is a quick recap of how we evaluate these combinatorial coefficients. NC1, choosing one out of N, can be done in N ways. And NC2, which means choosing two out of N, is equal to n into n minus 1 upon 2 ways. So using this formula, 25C2 is equal to 25 into 24 upon 2, which is equal to 300. Can you imagine 300 lines can be drawn by joining any two points out of 25? Next question is, how many triangles? So similar logic works here as well. For every selection of three points as vertices, we get a triangle. For instance, if we pick these three points, we get this triangle joining these as vertices. It is only when the three points turn out to be collinear that we will get a straight line passing through them and not a triangle. Therefore, number of triangles is equal to number of ways we can pick 3 points out of 25, which is equal to 25C3. We need the formula for NC3, which means choosing 3 out of N points to evaluate this. So let us look at that formula. NC3 is equal to N into N minus 1 into N minus 2 upon 6. So 25C3 is equal to 25 into 24 into 23 upon 6, which in turn is equal to 2300.
Back to our original question. Let us calculate the number of straight lines first. And I will show you two different approaches to solve this. But the first approach is a universal approach. It is simpler to understand and remember also because it applies to any such question, no matter what the data is. So see, if there were no constraint, which means no three of them were collinear, then for every selection of two points, we were getting a unique straight line. So the number of lines were 25C2. But in this case, points are collinear. So whenever I pick any two points out of these eight green points, I get the same green line again and again, which joins them. If I select this point and this point, I get the green line. Instead, if I select this point and this one, I get the same green line again. Remember, a line as opposed to a line segment extends infinitely on both directions. So how many times does this green line get repeated in our count? The same green line gets counted every time I select two points out of these eight. Eight C two times. Let us subtract the multiple counts of the same line. Similarly, if I select any two points out of these seven blue points, I get the same blue line again and again. This blue line gets counted 7C2 times. Ditto for the third set. If I select any two points out of these 10 red points, I get the same red line again and again. This red line gets counted how many times? 10C2 times. Let us subtract. But be careful. We have subtracted all combinations of two points which were resulting in these three lines joining the collinear points. So we need to add back three to our answer, three for these three lines. This expression evaluates to 209. Another approach will be to pick one point at a time. Apart from these three lines, for all the other lines joining these points, we need two points, right? So if we pick one point from set 3, which can be done in 8C1 ways, and one point from set, set 1, which can be done in 7C1 ways, we get a unique straight line. How many lines? The word AND means we have to multiply 8C1 and 7C1. Similarly, one point from set 3 and one point from set 2 can be picked in 8C1 into 10C1 ways. Third possibility is to pick one point from set 1 and one from set 2, which can be done in 7C1 into 10C1 ways. Add 3 for the three obvious collinear lines and you can see that our answers tally. Calculation wise, this was simpler. Moving on, let's calculate how many triangles can we draw by joining these points as vertices. So ideally, for every selection of three points, we get a triangle. So number of triangles should be 25C3 if there were no constraints. But do remember that if the three points that we selected turn out to be collinear, then we will not get a triangle by joining them. Instead, there would be just a straight line passing through them, right? So how many combinations of three points would be collinear? We need to subtract all those combinations because in those cases, we will not get a triangle. So if we pick three points out of these eight green points, we won't get a triangle. All such selections of three collinear points, we need to subtract. Eight C three of them. Likewise, Picking three points out of these seven blue points, which are collinear, won't give us a triangle. Seven C3 combinations. And picking three points out of these ten red points, which are collinear, won't give us a triangle either. Ten C3 combinations. So this expression evaluates to 2300 minus 56 minus 35 minus 120 
which is equal to 2089. This particular approach works in all scenarios, no matter how complicated the data is. But for this question, I'm also going to show you an alternative approach which will help us cross check our answer also. Right, so uh, back to the original logic, we need three non-collinear points to form a triangle. There are three broad sets of collinear points given in the data. The eight green points, the seven blue points, and the 10 red points. So listen carefully. To form a triangle, we can pick two points from any one of these sets and one from the remaining, isn't it? Two points from set three, the green set, we can pick in AC two ways. The remaining points are 7 plus 10, 17 in number. We can pick the one remaining point from the remaining 17 points in 17 C1 ways. Similarly, two points from set 1, the blue set, we can pick in 7 C2 ways. The remaining points are 8 plus 10, 18 in number. We can pick one point from the remaining 18 points in 18 C1 ways. And likewise, two points from set 2, the red set, we can pick in 10 C2 ways. The remaining points are 8 plus 7, 15 in number. We can pick one point from the remaining 15 points in 15 C1 ways. The only other possibility which will result in a triangle will be when we pick one point each from these three sets. This can be done in 8C1 into 7C1 into 10C1 ways. Evaluating this expression, our answer will be 476 plus 378 plus 675 plus 560, which is again equal to 2089. So our answers indeed tally. You may take whichever approach you like more, but let me tell you that the first approach is a more universal and accepted one. So that brings us to the end of this math lesson. Hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to press the like button if you did. Also, subscribe our channel to get notifications about other such useful content. Happy learning and take care everyone.